Corrective and Preventive Action CAPA process in five simple stages. 1. Open CAPA. Step 1. Collect data. This is the foundation of any CAPA process. Information needs to be gathered from various sources, whether it's a product defect, customer complaint, or audit findings. Data collection is essential for understanding the scope of the issue. Step 2. Analyze data. After gathering data, the team analyzes it to detect patterns, evaluate the severity, and identify any immediate risks or areas of concern. Step 3. Open CAPA. If analysis shows that corrective or preventive actions are necessary, the CAPA process is initiated. A CAPA is formally opened in the Quality Management System, QMS, and the issue becomes part of a structured resolution process. 2. Write Problem Statement. Step 1. Define the problem. Defining the problem involves clearly outlining the issue. It's important to answer basic questions like, what is the problem? When did it occur? Where in the process did it happen? This clarity helps in later stages. Step two, document the problem. Once defined, the problem must be documented clearly and concisely. The problem statement should be easy to understand, precise, and include as much factual detail as possible to avoid ambiguity. Step three, decide on action. At this point, a decision is made about the urgency of the issue. The team determines whether immediate containment is necessary to prevent further risks or if corrective actions can be applied directly without immediate action. Three, conduct investigation. Step one, investigate the failure. This is a critical phase where the issue is thoroughly examined to understand why it occurred. The investigation can involve cross-functional teams depending on the nature of the problem. Step two, define the root cause. Pinpointing the exact cause of the failure is the most important step in the investigation. Without identifying the true root cause, the problem is likely to reoccur. Root cause analysis tools like the five whys, fishbone diagram, or failure mode and effects analysis, FMEA, are often used. Step three, agree on root cause. After determining the root cause, it's vital that all stakeholders agree on it. Disagreement or miscommunication here can lead to ineffective CAPA actions and prolonged issues. Four, prepare CAPA plan. Step one, agree on an approach. The team must agree on a clear strategy for addressing the issue. This may involve multiple corrective and preventive steps, depending on the complexity of the problem. Step two, create an implementation plan. A detailed action plan is created. It outlines what needs to be done, who is responsible for each task, and what the timelines are. The plan should include both short-term corrective measures and long-term preventive actions to avoid future occurrences. Step three, develop an effectiveness plan. It's not enough to implement actions there must also be a plan to measure their effectiveness. This could involve specific metrics, performance indicators, or regular reviews to ensure that the corrective actions are working as intended. Step four, verify slash validate. Before closing the CAPA, it's important to validate that the corrective actions have truly resolved the problem. If the root cause was a process failure, for example, the process changes need to be validated to ensure they prevent the issue from happening again. Five. Implement slash measure CAPA. Step one, conduct interim checks. As CAPA actions are being implemented, it's important to regularly monitor progress and conduct interim checks to ensure things are on track. Any delays or complications should be addressed promptly. Step two, measure effectiveness. Once all actions are complete, the team must measure the CAPA's effectiveness. This is done by assessing whether the issue has been resolved, whether it could recur, and if any new problems have been introduced as a result of the corrective actions. Step three, close CAPA. When the CAPA is proven effective, it can be closed. Documentation should be finalized, detailing what actions were taken, the outcomes, and any lessons learned. The closure of a CAPA doesn't mean the end of monitoring. Ongoing surveillance is necessary to ensure long-term success. Tips for successful CAPA procedures. One, SMART goals for CAPA. Make sure your CAPA actions are SMART, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This helps keep everyone focused on clear objectives, measurable outcomes, and achievable results within a specific time frame. Two, clearly define roles. Assign clear responsibilities at each stage of the CAPA process. 
identifies specific people or teams to handle each task, from initiating and coordinating actions to following up on completion. This improves accountability, ensures ownership of tasks, and helps resolve issues faster. Three, classify issues by risk. Your Kappa management system should prioritize problems based on their severity and impact. There's no need to treat a minor issue with the same urgency as a major problem. By linking Kappas to the level of risk and quality impact, you can allocate resources more effectively and focus on critical issues first. Four, integrate Kappa into company culture. Make Kappa awareness a core part of your workplace culture. Provide training so that all employees understand their role in identifying and reporting issues. Encourage them to suggest improvements and actively participate in the Kappa process. Recognize and reward those who take initiative in driving quality improvements. Five, use the right tools for Kappa. Ensure your Kappa system is efficient, accurate, and easy to manage. Manual, paper-based systems slow down the process and make it harder to trace issues. Use digital tools to improve visibility, track root causes, and ensure faster, more effective corrective actions. Six, continuous improvement. Kappa is not a one-time effort. Regularly review and refine your Kappa processes to meet the evolving needs of your organization. As new products, procedures, and processes come into play, ensure your Kappa strategy adapts, helping you stay ahead of potential problems and continuously improve quality. Most common problems in the Kappa process. An effective Kappa, corrective and preventive action, process is vital for identifying issues and resolving quality problems in a pharmaceutical or medical device company. However, certain common issues can undermine the process. Here's a breakdown of the most frequent Kappa problems and how to avoid them. One, limited communication across departments. Lack of communication between departments can create serious gaps in the Kappa system. When an issue arises, failure to share information between teams leads to cascading problems as others might not be aware of or prepared to respond to the nonconformance. To avoid this, all departments should be aligned and clear information should flow from the team that identifies the problem to all relevant stakeholders. Sharing where the issue occurred, why it happened, and how to respond can prevent future failures. Two, reactive versus proactive approach. Many companies take a reactive approach, only addressing issues after they occur. While this might solve immediate problems, it doesn't prevent future ones. By adopting a proactive approach, Teams can anticipate potential issues and prevent them before they disrupt processes or products. This proactive mindset is especially crucial during the design and development stages of new medical devices or pharmaceuticals, where unexpected issues can derail production and delay market launch. Three, weak root cause analysis methods. A weak or incomplete root cause analysis means that the underlying problem isn't properly identified, leading to repeated issues. To ensure you're addressing the real cause, use structured methods like the 6MS of production, manpower, method, machine, material, milieu, environment, and measurement. This methodology helps teams systematically evaluate potential factors and find the real source of the issue, ensuring it won't recur. 4. Overly complicated Kappa documentation. Kappa documentation needs to be detailed yet clear. When the documentation is overly complex, it can slow down the process and lead to confusion. This may result in the FDA or other regulatory bodies citing organizations for improper Kappa management. Documentation should balance thoroughness with clarity to ensure that the entire Kappa process remains efficient and easy to follow while meeting compliance requirements. Thank you for watching this video on the Kappa Corrective and Preventive Action process. We hope you found it insightful and valuable for enhancing your understanding of Kappa's role in maintaining quality and compliance within the pharmaceutical and medical device industries. Whether you're dealing with root cause analysis, improving communication across departments, or simplifying your Kappa documentation, these practices are essential to streamlining operations and ensuring product safety. If you want to stay updated with more informative content on pharmaceutical guidelines, industry best practices, and regulatory compliance, make sure to subscribe to our PharmaTalks YouTube channel. We regularly share new videos that dive deep into key topics, Kappa strategies, and much more, all designed to help professionals like you stay ahead in this ever-evolving field. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future updates. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and leave your comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts or questions. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next PharmaTalks episode.